Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Tipsquirrel.com, the website for everything Photoshop, Lightroom, Photoshop Elements, and Adobe Camera Raw. In this video, I'll be making this illustration using multiple planes. Now, I don't use 3D in this, so it's open to everyone. Let's jump into Photoshop and see how we get on. So here we are in Photoshop with our starting image, and the first thing I want to do is put my logo onto the side of this lorry. Now my logo is already open on this image here, and all I've got to do is copy it. I select Control A, or Command A if you're on a Mac, to select all, then Control or Command C to copy it to the clipboard, and Control or Command D to deselect. Let's go back to my truck, now let's create a new layer for my logo to go on to. Let's call that logo. Now I go to filter and vanishing point and I can make the first of my planes. I want to go around the lorry so that's where I'll make my first plane. I'm going to use control or command and the plus key just to zoom in and then use the space bar just to move my image around. Now, using the Create Plane tool, I can start creating my plane. So I'm going to start at the top left-hand corner and click once, and you'll see I start drawing this blue line. I'm going to again use the spacebar to get my hand tool to shimmy down my image and click again. Spacebar again for the bottom right-hand corner. And then finally, up to the top right to do the last corner and you'll see it puts this grid. If I control minus to zoom back out again, you can see now I've got this grid on the side of my lorry, and in fact, it's holding the perspective for me. Remember, my logo is on my clipboard, so I can now press control V to paste. And sure enough, my logo comes at the top left-hand corner. And you'll see that I get this nice black arrow when I go over the top of it. This means I can click and move around. So click and I can move this around. Now, everything stays the same until I go over my new plane and then it snaps to the right perspective. I'm going to find generally where I want it and let go. This isn't quite right, so if I go over to my transform tool, choose that, I get these transform handles. Just like in Photoshop, if I press and hold the shift key, I can then click and drag out and it keeps the perspective. Good. I'm happy with that. I'm going to click OK. And there it is, all in the right perspective for me. To finish off this layer, I'm going to change the blend mode of this from normal to multiply, just to drop the whites out and keep the blacks. Good. Let's put on some lettering now. So I'm going to go and choose my type tool and click down somewhere and type the words I want. In my case, multiple planes. There we go. I use the move tool just to move it back on where I can see it. Now I can't take this into vanishing point, so I need to make a copy of this too. So I'm going to hold down the control or the command key and click on the icon for this layer, and that will select all the lettering. Again, control or command C, and then D to deselect, control or command D to deselect, and now I can hide the visibility of this layer. Let's make a new layer and we'll call this one text. And once again, can go to filter and vanishing point. Now you'll notice there's some transform handles around my plane here. That means I can stretch these out. So let's do that. I can stretch this one into the foreground. I can stretch it up, but I can also stretch it down. Now for me, because where I want the lettering is very close to the lorry, it's not going to be a great variance between the different perspectives and they're kind of very much parallel. You may need to tweak this a little bit with your image. So I have my plane now extended, which makes it seem like it's closer to me. So control V will now paste down my letters. I can go and grab that just like I did my logo. And once again, when I come into my plane, it snaps to the right perspective. I'm going to come down to this line and just drop it on. 
I'm happy with that. I'm going to click OK. Finally, I need the shadow. So I'm going to create a new layer. Call this one Shadow. Shadow. And once again, go to Filter, Vanishing Point. And now I need another plane to come along the floor. Now rather than draw it out, I can use the plane that I've already got as reference. And Photoshop does a very good job here. Let me use Control and Minus to zoom out and use these transform handles again. And notice we've got this tool here, Create Plane Tool. If I go onto that one and I click one of these transform handles, it pulls another plane out. So in this case, it's like the back wall. Now I can go and click on this Create Plane Tool again and I can click and it almost brings out the ceiling there. But actually what I want is the floor, of course. So let's click once again. Oops, let's go and select this plane first. Then we can go and get this one and drag it out. And now I have the floor. Let's Control and V to paste down my lettering. And just for giggles, let's see what happens when I go onto the different planes. I can't really see it down the bottom there, but notice how it turns the corner. The one I want, of course, is down the bottom. Let's drop it down there. Control and plus key just to zoom back in a bit and use my hand tool using the spacebar to find out where I want to be. Now this is wrong way round, so let's go and get my transform tool again. Now in Photoshop proper, I could right click and do all kinds of flips. Not here, unfortunately. I've got to use the transform handles. So I'll grab hold of this one in the middle and just pull it out, make it a bit longer. Let's Control and minus just so I can see what I'm doing. And bring this in. And sure enough, I want to bring that out a little bit further, I think. And then bring it in. And all the time it's holding perspective for me. Okay, that's about the length of the shadow I want. Might even want to bring that in just a tad. Let's zoom in. I don't want to spend too long on this. It can be very interesting for you to watch, but I want to get it reasonably right. So let's get this one and just bring it down. Okay. And there we have it. Okay, I can just zip along, make sure, make sure everything lines up. Did it does? Let's press OK. Now I'd like my shadow to be underneath my text, so sure enough, I just click and drag that, and I want it to be a different color. So let's go and grab the color picker, let's click on the swatch here, and then go and click on the shadow underneath the lorry, just so I've got a reference point, and click OK. Now that's my foreground color. And again, I can use that same technique I did just a little while ago by holding down the control key and clicking on the icon for this layer to highlight what's on this layer. And then press Alt and Backspace to fill it in with that gray. Control or Command D to deselect. Let's once again use the multiply blend mode and take down the opacity until we get somewhere near the same as the lorry little bit of a blur. Let's go to Filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur. Just a little bit of a blur, just to roughen up those edges a little bit. That's looking better. And then final touch on the lettering itself, so on the text, click on that, then double click. And I can use the gradient overlay. It's about 100 degrees, I think. And then take down the opacity just to give it a little bit of a shadow actually on the lettering. Click OK. And there we have it. We've used three planes to get this very simple illustration. My name's Eric Grano. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.